Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the Midori Mao Loa top. So we just need fabric, elastic, pattern paper, and sewing supplies. And I left a description with some of the stuff that I use and links. So the first step is going to be making our pattern. So to do this, I am taking a pattern from an old top. I'll link that video below. And I'm basically just going to do half of it because we're going to have little strings in the middle. So once we figure that out, we're going to take it in on the bust side just a little bit because obviously since we're having strings, it's going to need to be a little shorter uh, to make sure that the strings fit. And just trace it so it's clear and then we'll cut it out. And so for these is the front piece and we're actually going to cut four. Yeah, that's right. Good correction. I'm going to cut four of them because you're going to have two on the left side, two on the right side to make each bust. So once you have your pattern piece, just make sure you cut out all of your stuff. And this fabric I got from an Etsy shop. It's just standard nylon spandex. I think the official name is like Matt Tricot. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But yeah, it's good fabric, so I'll definitely link that shop below. And I'm not leaving too much of a seam allowance, just like a quarter inch or so. And then we're gonna cut our strings for the top. So I always make my strings one and one quarter inch. And this tool is super, super helpful. It's like a quilting ruler, I think, but um, I use it for my own stuff. Sorry if you can hear my dog whining. My husband just went downstairs and now she's all buttered. So I cut two strings for the neck and I just made them a little bit long so I could use those same strings for the in-betweens. Cool, so we're gonna fold all of our strings in half and then sew the elastic on. I've done this in a bunch of other videos too. Then we're gonna sew on all three sides as well. And for this project, I decided to use my serger. It's just a little quicker than a regular sewing machine, but if you have a regular sewing machine, hey, stop crying, it's okay. Uh, sorry, if you have a regular sewing machine, definitely use the zigzag stitch on that. Some machines even have like a fake serge, so look at your construction manual and figure that out. So now moving on to the top, or the front pieces, I should say just sewing on all three sides and leaving the center part open because that's where we're going to insert our three little strings. And so if you want you can put elastic on over where you serge. Just make sure if you do the elastic it's all on the same side. Hey! Sit! Sit! Well, girl, you stay. Okay. Now we're going to insert the halter strings in there. I just had to cut off the tip since I went over it a little bit. And basically you're going to insert these from the inside. That's how you make it seamless. So just do that for both sides. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll serge over um, the halter seam there where I'm showing you where to stitch it. I'll serge first. I'll go serge and then I'll serge again and then I'll actually go back with a regular top stitch. And um, okay, I need to discipline my dog. I'm sorry. I'll go back with a regular straight stitch and try to secure it somewhere. All right, one second. I will be right back. Okay, she's good. So yeah, and then now we're gonna move on to the three little 
strings in the center. And this can be pretty difficult if you're not careful because they're such short strings and they're so floppy and it's hard to make them um, equidistant. So to do this, you're gonna stick the strings inside and this is very important. Do not have the strings sticking out because it's not gonna show. So just line them up as best you can and I think it's much easier to use a regular sewing machine for this and just do a straight stitch and just go back and forth, secure it as much as you can. Try to make those three strings um, as equidistant as possible. Usually what I'll do is I'll put the top string in the way top, bottom string on the way bottom, and then try to figure out the middle string, just equidistant between the two. So once you pull it inside out, it should look like that. And yeah, see how floppy those strings are? It's not super fun. There's an easier way of doing this, I'll definitely update it. So take your one piece, right side out, stick it through so that the three strings are inside that left piece. And again, you're gonna push the strings so that they're just at the very edge because anything sticking outside is not going to show on the outside. And that's how you make it seamless. I hope I'm being clear with this. Basically, I just fed in the other piece and repeated the same process with the strings. So then once you do that, you can pull it and it looks like that. Mine were a little uneven, so I actually went back and fixed that problem later. So now I'm just gonna work on the edges there. I'm just surging it, folding it a little bit so we can feed a string through there. And I'm just doing that on both sides. So I guess it is zigzag. Finish it off with a zigzag and then fold it just a little bit, enough to fit a string, and then straight stitch it down. So we'll be able to feed our string through there for the back. And I did that on both sides. So now we are going to do something I don't usually do. I am zigzag stitching on the inside just for a more secure fit. So the reason I did this is sometimes when you have the elastic in there, it just is a little like loose and floppy and adding an additional zigzag stitch across all borders just makes it look a little more professional and um, secure. So I do a relatively tight zigzag on this because obviously when you stretch the bathing suit, the stitch is gonna need to stretch as much as possible. And if you can, I definitely recommend using a stretchier thread like polyester or woolly nylon for this because it's swimwear and like seriously, if you stretch it, the thread is going to break. So definitely be as cautious as you can. So again, right now I'm just going on all sides and just stitching it. And that's what it looks like. Sorry, I took that from my phone so it's not totally clear. But yeah, just a nice little professional finish. And here we are. So yet again, I'm super happy with how this turned out. It actually, I didn't intend for it to be as like flattering as I, like, I don't know. It's really flattering and I'm really happy with it and I'm definitely gonna make some more of these. The um, only thing I wish I did is for the back, I ended up like feeding a string through and I just didn't make that string long enough. You'll see when I turn around, if I turn around, I don't even know. Come on, Katie, so full of yourself. Think you're a model or something? Just kidding. Yeah, so like I fed a string in between the two and I just wish that I made that string a little longer so I could make it a bow. Um, alternatively, if you know your size, just make the back piece different so it's all attached or even put like a little hook or something in there. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I have a bunch of stuff in my queue for what to do next. And yeah, I hope to get all this done and I will see you in the next one.